Okay, so here we have the nephron. Um, I'm just going to show how it works. Right, so um, the glomerulus, here we have the afferent arteria, which is uh, where everything goes in to start with. And then once everything is in there, like the fluid, blood and everything, it goes into this part right here called, called the glomerulus. The glomerulus and Bowman's capsule right here, this green part, are the responsible uh, for the first step in the urine formation. So as blood flows uh, through the glomerulus, uh, pressure forces water and small molecules out of the glomerulus into a uh, Bowman's capsule. This filtration process leaves, flu leaves, flu leaves, I'm sorry, leaves blood cells and proteins uh, behind in the efferent arteria, which goes uh, exactly this way right here. Anyway, uh, the proximal convoluted tubal is responsible, this one, the blue one right here, is responsible for most of the reabsorption of water and solids from the glomerular filtrate. The cells um, of this section of the nephron actively transport uh, sodium, so um, let's say so that the blood goes through here into Bowman's capsule right here, right here. And once they get there, sodium starts to go out out into the fluid surround, surrendering, surrendering uh, that section. Um, it also has some chlorine and other solids such as uh, glucose, amino acids and it takes everything out of the tubal fluid. Anyway, the active transport of solids out of the co proximal convoluted tubal into the tissue fluid causes water to follow by diffusion, meaning that water is in this area is permeable and also goes out into this section right here. The water and the salts move into the tissue fluid are taken up by the uh, peritubular capillaries and returned um, and returned into the venous blood, just like uh, the afferent arterial where everything lives there and goes to the blood. Anyway, uh, as the fluid continues its path, um, the... Um, oh, sorry, hold on. So, uh, even though a large volume of water and salts leaves this area, um, out of the proximal convoluted tubule, the overall concentration or osmolarity of the fluid that enters the loop of Henle, which is this area right here, down here, it's famous loop of Henle, is similar to the one of the blood plasma, although its composition is uh, quite different. So the ability of the kidney uh, to produce uh, urine that is hypertonic to uh, the blood plasma is due to the, lup of the, to, due to the loop of Henle. Uh, the loop of Henle does not concentrate the urine directly, rather it functions like a counter-current counter multiplier, creating a concentration gradient in the surrounding metal line, all this part. So it counter-currents, uh, everything goes through the loop of Henle like several times, it cleans everything, every time it goes in. So to understand the counter-current multiplier mechanism, um, I think it's uh, just easy to, um, to go backwards in the, in the diagram. Um, so if we start with a thick ascending limb right here, I'm sorry, this uh, this part right here, uh, uh, act it actively transports chlorine with also uh, sodium from the tubal fluid and moves it into the surrounded tubal uh, area right here. Uh, what that uh, the the thick ascending limb is not permeable to water, so the reabsorption of sodium and chlorine out of the um, Tubal is not followed by the outward of uh, diffusion of water. This reabsorption of sodium and chlorine raises the concentration of solids in the in this area right here, so that they have like a high uh, concentration. The descending limb, in contrast, right here, it is permeable to water, but not permeable to sodium or chlorine. So the surrounding fluid has um, uh, since the surrounding fluid has been been made more concentrated water leaves the tubule by osmosis. As a result, the fluid in the descending lamp right here becomes more concentrated as it flows towards the bottom of the medulla. So we could say that if I draw a line right here, it's less concentrated here and it, it goes increases as it gets uh, down to the bottom of, uh, of the medulla. The thin ascending limb is not permeable to water anymore right here, this one. It only leaves uh, sodium and chlorine out of there to the fluid. Um, since the tubal fluid is more concentrated than the surrounded tissue, this is more concentrated than the surrounded tissue, um, uh, sodium and chlorine diffuse out. 
the thick ascending lamp uh, continues to move uh, the end, the sodium and the chlorine up and that's uh, pretty much it. As a result of this process, the tubal fluid reaching the distal convoluted tubule is less concentrated than the blood plasma and the solids that have been left behind in the renal medulla everything, by the time everything reaches here. And, uh, um, have, and the, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, the solids that have been left behind in the renal medulla have created a concentration gradient in the surrounded tissue fluid. Since the fluid entering the distal convoluted tubule is less concentrated than the surrounded cortex, the tubule loses water osmotically as it flows towards the collecting, uh, towards the collecting dot right here. Um, the tubule fluid entering the collecting duct, everything going in here, actually it's not red, it's, I'm sorry about that, it's not yellow. Um, when it reaches the collecting duct right here, I'm sorry about that, um, uh, it has the same concentration as the blood plasma, however, uh, since the sodium and the chlorine have been moved out of the tubal fluid, the urea and other waste products make up for the greater uh, proportion of the total sol solid content at this point. As the collecting dog descends from the cortex to the tip of the renal pyramid right here, uh, the concentration gradient established by the loop of Henle increases. This increase in solid concentration causes more and more water to be absorbed from the fluid, thus concentration the urine and the collecting uh, duct. As for the ADH, so I'm sorry, let me hold on this real quick right there. Okay, so the ADH, um, the 